I'm going to take a closer look at WPML multi-language plugin. So we see right here, I have three modules uh, installed and activated. I have the WPML multilingual CMS. This needs to be active. And also the WPML string translation also needs to be active. The media translation I activated because I'm not fully sure of what it actually does but I figured out that uh, it will actually just take uh, the images and all the uh, title of image and also translate that to another language. So I don't really need this part of it. So going into WPML here, we'll just go into translation management first. And what I'll do is uh, actually, this shows a screen that shows various pages that I, or various areas of the site that I can uh, translate. I am using a uh, the theme. First of all, this is in Norwegian. I'm using a theme 2024, and that is then the site editor, or as it says here, editing back to me. So um, I, my focus is on full site editing and how WPML works with that. So let's go through the different screens here. Here, I sh it shows the various areas. Um, I can go all types. So this is post, page, pattern, template, and template part, navigation, and a block. So I can go and select these, or I can see all of them here in the screen. And it will show uh, what is translated. And um, here is completed. And here is something that's waiting for translator. I don't need a 20 pixel spacer that's been translated. Same with the one here, a footer has been translated. So this gives a nice overview over different areas that have been translated. So this is template, it says mall here, but as template that has been translated here. And also header has been translated, front page translated. And these are then there's pages that are, have not been translated yet. So um, some of these pages have been translated and others have not. So I'll go to languages screen. And here I have done English and Norwegian. So I decided to, uh, this is a just a development site and the live site has done it similar as the one here and uh, language name added as a parameter so we'll just kind of keep it in the same way so here's the default flag format uh, SVG or PNG I don't really know uh, which one they should use but I kind of just left it at default SVG format uh, order languages um, I'm thinking this probably doesn't matter right now. Um, main language is Norwegian or Norsk Bukmål, and the secondary language is English. So I'm just kind of skipping over this part here. Uh, language switcher. Um, if I had under appearance, uh, which is then um, Utsana, if I had the menu area in here. I would have option to add that to a menu. So this is not active because I don't have any menu uh, available here that is through full site editing. So I can also add a widget language switcher. I don't, I'm not using widgets for full site editing. Footer switcher, I just kind of am leading these at default, leaving it as default for the moment. I might adjust this later on, but I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Uh, links to translation for posts, I'm just going to leave it unchecked for now. Here it says insert WPM uh, switches in custom location. I have not looked at this yet. Here it can hide um, from history search instance, but I'll just kind of leave that as it is. It, it doesn't matter if it, 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 it would be nice if it's available, so I'm not going to take the, uh, hide English here. So I'm just leaving a lot of these as default. And yeah, so that's basically it uh, for where's here. We'll just kind of go through and, re and read through it. 
I will just left most of the screen as default as is. Theme and plugin lo localization. I have really not done anything that at all. Or actually, one thing I have done, I have done um, string and themes because it's uh, full site editing in 2024. I had to then select this and scan select the theme for strings. Uh, for full uh, for all of 2024, which is templates, uh, template parts, and uh, patterns, and things like that. I had to do that so I can have that into translation management. So this was actually an important part to do. S string and themes, select the theme in use, and then scan select the theme for strings. I see I have 151 strings here, and a lot of that was added then to translation management. And anything else here? Is strings or plugins? I just kind of skip this part. Um, if there are different specific things in plugins that are nice to have translated, just select the plugin here in the list, and then go and scan select the plugins for strings. And the strings will show up here, and also very likely under translation management. So that's for this screen translations. So here is basically when I make an adjustment to a screen. Um, I need to go into translation management and just kind of let them uh, and then activate a new translation. The new translation will come into the translation area here and so that I can go in and click translate. Here it says, for instance, translate. I'm not going to do anything with these. These are spacers, uh, blocks in um, Gutenberg. So here it says there's a visual activity here or kind of news. I can translate that and that means that the English version will then reflect the Norwegian version. When I made an adjustment to the Norwegian version, I need to then go into translation management, let them know that I made a change and just kind of activate that through translation management and it will show up here in the translation screen where I click, click translate. I can do that right now, click translate for this page that is in Norwegian and I will see it the one language on the left and the other language on the right I would basically go in and change the language on the right and click save and for each one click save here and we'll fill up gradually 10% and complete translation okay so we'll go back here into the regular screen this is a really nice area for instance so that is the translations area, uh, media translation. I'm just going to skip that. VP syncs, menu sync. I'll look at what that is. And uh, here there are no uh, menus because I'm using full site editing. So string translation. I've also tested this site in the Google PageSpeed uh, 2024 because I was wondering how WPML would impact the speed of the site on the front end. So here is then a report from uh, the development site I'm using, designkuj.com, which is this then the site here. I was wondering, as I said, how WPML would impact the um, site speed. And I see the mobile performance is on 84, which is just really, really good. SEO is low, of course. It should be even lower because it's not visible for uh, search engines, the site yet. Uh, that will only be on original site, so that's low. And for desktop, this is just awesome core. So that is, I can see this is doing really well with the 2024 uh, full site editing theme and various plugins that I have and um, WPML requires a lot of resources but I see that it's not impacting page speed at page speed at all so that's great to see so here we basically have uh, string translation for uh, I believe their sites are I'm not really sure this is somewhere and uh, that I've translated something here so what I will do now, um, so we have text and image translation. I'm just going to mainly focus on uh, what I've been using it for. So do you have settings and support and things like that. So what I want to do now, I want to go to 
I want to go to pages. I have pages in here somewhere uh, and pages here. So what I've been doing here is I've been uh, see this pencil. This is uh, English translation I've already added. Here it says red, uh, yellow, and green. Old pictures, native photo, and paintings technique. So I can just click the plus sign and get then the um, information for the red page and start translating here. So what it will do is I will just click here add in the correct uh, caption for it. I have another document. I will add in the text for it. I'll click save. And the information here will automatically add it into alt text. So I can click uh, save for alt text as well. So it's translate caption alt text. And I'll just kind of go through the page here when I'm done and that's at 100%, I'll click complete translation. Uh, if there's a problem here, uh, I met the problem here, I had problems saving some of these boxes. Basically, I just refreshed the page and went back and re-added the ones I had problems adding. And then it went to 100% and I was able to complete the translation. So let's see what it looks like in full site editing. I'll go to uh, editing here, full site. And here under templates, which is modeled in Norwegian, I will just select uh, one of the pages here. Here is a pages template. So the language switcher is a block. So I'll see the block here is language switcher. Uh, I added that by just going, going here and writing language and just kind of dragging it out to where I need it. So we have that in here. This is the default of how it shows up. I wanted that as part of the menu, but at the moment that is not possible. Um, because here's the navigation. I'm not able to drag the language switcher into the navigation area. For instance, search is there already, and I can also add social icons if I want to into navigation because I want the language switcher as part of the navigation area here beside the search uh, icon. So right now it's below. And by default, when adding a language switcher here on the side, I can do layout, I can do a drop down list. Here is the list. I can switch to uh, orientation if I want to here. And uh, here I get it in the middle. Uh, actually, it doesn't really kind of, it's not really in the middle. Here, it would be nice to have it uh, wide. Um, some of the alignments that our other blocks have it as well. So display here on the side, I can show the flag. I can show language name. So now I have it really similar to what's here. And the CSS is a little bit off. The Norwegian flag is higher up than the English flag. I can change the width and height of it and style here. Uh, I can change some color, language background, things like that in color here. Uh, language spacing, space in between the icons. I can add typography if I want to, font size, letter spacing. Um, I'm going to have to, I believe, add CSS to get this so they're beside each other. So you see up here, they're not, they're just kind of off alignment. So uh, that's basically how I added it to this area here. So what else is needed? I'm just going to delete this and I'll do a save again. And you have it here on the front page. It's over here. I want it is up here next to the menu or navigation. They're going to work on so I'm able to put this into navigation and their full site editing. Here on the bottom, we have an English and Norwegian. I might adjust this la later on. So this basically shows that it's on the development site for now. I believe that's it. Um, I wanted to mention here for this kind of introduction to the VPML and how I'm using it for this site. So one of the most important things I would say is uh, it's very, it's a lot easier to use than it was uh, a bunch of years ago when I used it last. I've been using Polylang for another site uh, here based on this experience here, I would rather use the WPML and it's, it's really nice and easy to get into. 
I will click a plus sign to add then uh, the English version for these Norwegian pages. Here I can click a pencil and then edit the English translation. So it's, I really like it.